Welcome to Decoding DX. We're a group of fourth year medical students with a passion for education and patient care. This episode of Decoding DX is for educational purposes only and should not be used as medical advice. Please consult your healthcare provider for any medical needs. The opinions expressed represents those of the participants and are not of our affiliated institutions. Thank you for joining us on Decoding DX. We keep learning so much through this experience, and we're so glad that you're learning alongside with us. Now, let's get to the episode. Hello, and welcome back to 10 Clinical Minutes. Today, we have part two of our two-part Insulin in the Hospital series. Again, quick reminder, this presentation is not about DKA or critical care settings. What we are talking about are non-critically ill patients who have diabetes and are admitted to the hospital for any other reason. In the previous video, we talked about how do you decide what dose to start for your patients when they're admitted to the hospital and they have diabetes, whether they had a previous outpatient insulin regimen or not. So we're gonna pick up where we left off and we're gonna start off with how do you then adjust the dose? So you picked your starting dose on admission. How then do you figure out what you need to do from there on? One thing to look at when you're doing your pre-rounds in the morning, how many total units of insulin did that patient get yesterday? So what we're really talking about here is how much correction was needed, or did they have a bunch of hypoglycemic episodes saying that maybe you gave too much? If you erred on the side of hypoglycemia when you were doing the starting dose, so you maybe went on the lower side of dosing to be a little bit more safe, you might see some hyperglycemia in your patient's point of care glucose measurements from the previous day. If they had persistent hyperglycemia, so just kind of all of their glucoses were a little high all day, you can add together all of the units of insulin that they got yesterday, regardless of if it was long acting or short acting, and you can consider that their new total daily dose of insulin, because that's how much they required yesterday, including the correction units, in order to try and control their blood glucose. So with that new total daily dose of everything added together, you can then resplit that, as we talked about in the previous episode, when we talked about splitting the total daily dose in 50% bolus and 50% basal, then divided by meals. You can input those numbers to adjust your orders and then repeat the process tomorrow until their sugar seems to be well controlled. If on the other hand, they have a more isolated hyperglycemia, then you want to be more specific about the orders that you adjust. So the thing to remember about this is that a high glucose level at a single time is indicative of the previous insulin dose. Let's say, for example, they're having high glucose measurements at meals. This is telling us that we need to increase their short acting dose at the previous time interval. On the other hand, if they're having high glucose levels in the morning when they're fasting, we need to increase their basal dose that they get at night. So in this graph, the red lines are the time points at which we measure the point of care glucose, and the green lines are the time points at which we give insulin. And so typically this is given at about four times a day at the morning, lunchtime, dinner time, and bedtime. So let's say for example, they have high glucose measurements around the lunchtime. What this is actually telling us is that the insulin that we gave at breakfast time it was too low. If, on the other hand, their sugars are really high at bedtime, that's telling us that the insulin that we gave at dinner time was not enough to control the amount of sugar that got into the patient's blood from their meal at dinner time, which leads to a higher level of glucose when we measure it a few hours later at bedtime. The other important measurement that we look at is the fasting sugar. So if their fasting sugar in the morning is really high or above goal, that tells us that their nighttime basal dose was too low because it wasn't enough insulin to control their sugar overnight, leading to a higher glucose level in the morning when we next measure it. So let's look at some examples to help this make a little bit more sense. So let's say we have a 59-year-old male with type 2 diabetes, and his home regimen is insulin detamir, 32 units, and insulin aspart, 16 units with meals. We don't really know when his last A1C was, and he was admitted to the hospital for a diabetic foot wound, cellulitis, and possible osteomyelitis. He's overall stable, he's not septic, although he's a little bit febrile. So what are we gonna order? He has an existing insulin regimen, so that makes it a little bit easier. If he's not super sick, we can consider starting the same dose, but because he has maybe a sense of infection, he could decompensate, we're not quite sure. We wanna err on the side of hyperglycemia rather than hypoglycemia. So we might start at a little bit of a lower dose, knowing that we might have some high sugars that we can then adjust. So for him, it would make sense to maybe start with his basal dose a little bit lower than his home at 24 units of glargine, 
And for his meal dose, we could also start a little bit lower with about 10 units of aspirate with meals. Again, holding if he's not eating, whether that's by order or just by not having an appetite. And then remember, we need to add on a correction factor to be able to accommodate for if the orders that we give isn't enough to control his sugars. So we can give this patient a low dose correction factor before meals and add an A1C to his admission labs because we haven't had one in the last three months. So let's say this patient has had a day in the hospital and now you're pre-rounding the next day. And these are his point of care glucose measurements from the previous day. So looking at these, you can see that there are some numbers that were above goal. And we can see in the ASPART row that he did get some correction factor because he got his meal dose of 10 plus a few extra units at each meal. So how are we going to adjust his insulin orders? Well, to start off, we're gonna look at his basal insulin. So his fasting sugars two days in a row were within goal, 169 and 153. Remember our goal is from 140 to 180. So we don't really need to change his basal dose. We can go ahead and keep that where it's at. On the other hand, his mealtime sugars have been pretty high. He was getting one to two units of extra insulin per meal. So we can go ahead and add those extra two units to his meal dose and increase the aspart meal dose to 12 units of insulin. You might, on the other hand, maybe go more conservative and make it 11 units if maybe he's looking a little bit sicker. So based on your clinical judgment, you can kind of lean on the side of more or less. Let's go through another example. This time we have a 73-year-old female with type 2 diabetes on metformin and empagliflozin, who was admitted for a fall. She's hemodynamically stable, but only oriented times 2. Her BMP glucose in the ER is 149. Her last A1C was two months ago at 7.4%. So what are we going to start this patient on? She's not on an existing insulin regimen, so we need to do a, a new start for her. Because she's a little bit elderly and she fell, we may want to consider that maybe that fall was from hypoglycemia, so we should probably be a little conservative with our insulin dosing. So with total daily dose, on the conservative side, we can start with 0.2 units per keg, remembering that our range is 0.2 to 0.5 per keg, and so we're choosing the lower range of that for her. So with her being an 80 kilogram female, that comes out to about 16 units of a total daily dose of insulin. If we split that into half basal, half bolus, we get glargine eight units for her basal dose at night, and for a bolus dose, we'll split that into three. So eight divided by three is not an even number. That comes out to 2.6. So are we going to choose the two units or the three units? Again, with this patient, we want to be a little more conservative. So we'll err on the side of caution and go with the two units with meals. We always want to add on a low dose correction factor in case her sugars are higher than we expect. So next day, you come in, you're pre-rounding, you're looking at her sugars. And these are her sugars from the previous day. This wasn't necessarily unexpected. We see that her sugars were pretty high all day. So we can consider that we probably just didn't give her enough of a total daily dose. So let's recalculate. We're gonna add up all of the units of insulin that she got the day before. That includes short acting and long acting. So for her, that equals 22 units. Go back and look through the chart if this doesn't make sense. We're just adding up all of the aspart and all of the glargine that she got. We're then gonna split that into 50% basal to try and control her morning sugars. So that'll give us a dose of 11 units of glargine at night instead of the eight that we started her with. The other half is bolus. So we're gonna have 11 units to distribute among our boluses. Looking at our meal sugars, they're all pretty high. She was getting anywhere from two to three units of correction factor. So we can err on the side of higher insulin for her mealtime doses with this. So 11 divided by three is in between three and four. And because all of her sugars were pretty high and she's looking stable in, on our clinical exam, we can err on the higher side and just round up to four units of insulin per meal. Please pause the video, go back through these examples, make sure that they make sense. There's also lots of other practice scenarios that you can find online to help work through this process. It's something that sounds complicated when you're learning about it, but once you have a few rounds of practice doing it on the words, it makes a lot more sense. Now we're going to move on to steroid-induced hyperglycemia. This is a pretty common situation that we see in both inpatients and outpatients, especially right now in the COVID pandemic. With all the dexamethasone that we're giving our COVID patients, we're seeing this quite a bit in the hospital. The big thing to think about with steroid-induced hyperglycemia is that it's, it's physiologic. We know that it's going to happen. We expect it to happen as a known side effect of the steroids. You really only need to start insulin if you're thinking that the patient's going to be on the steroids for more than a few weeks. Hyperglycemia is not necessarily a short-term problem unless it's extreme, but more of the risks of hyperglycemia are in the long term.
So if you expect your patients to need these steroids for more than a few weeks and their glucose is greater than 140 for a few days, then you wanna go ahead and start the insulin. The dose that you choose is going to be similar to the approach that we had for starting a patient on insulin who isn't previous on insulin for diabetes, but you might wanna start with a little bit of a lower range in some situations. So you can do anywhere from, from 0.1 to 0.5 units per kilogram per day. And again, you wanna take this in the context of your patient. Are we talking about super high doses or maybe just moderate doses? Are we talking short-term or long-term? And does the patient have any prior insulin use that might increase their insulin resistance? One really important thing to know is that steroid hyperglycemia has much more effects on the prandial sugars or the hyperglycemia that happens with meal times. So with this in mind, you might split their total daily dose with a heavier burden on the prandial side. So maybe 70% of a total daily dose with meals. You can also consider doing only prandial dosing if their fasting glucoses are in the normal range. There's a good amount of research for which insulin regimen with which type of steroid is best. That's a bit out of the scope for this talk, but one thing to know, prednisone being the most common, you can often do prednisone as only bolus dosing, and you can just dose it once a day with the prednisone or however often you're dosing that prednisone. Again, just like with everything else, individualize to your patient and adjust as needed. Big key points, point of care glucose is a result of the previous insulin dose. If the insulin that you order on admission isn't quite enough and they have a lot of hyperglycemia throughout the day, you can add up all the units that they got and then redivide. If you need to adjust based on mealtime glucoses, you want to adjust the short-acting insulin and fasting glucose, you, you want to adjust the PM basal insulin that it was given. Thank you for joining us on Head and Clinical Minutes. Here are some references. We look forward to seeing you next time.